Section 8.6 is a section on graphing inequalities, and I'm just going to jump into it. Um, my problem two, I want to graph the, make, identify every point on a two-dimensional graph whose x-coordinate is greater than 5, but not equal to 5. I'm going to start off doing this by making a dashed line, a dashed vertical line, through 5 on the x-axis. And what this is going to identify is every point that has an x-coordinate specifically equal to 5. None of these points need to be included in my answer because my answer is only supposed to identify points on the graph that have x-coordinates bigger than 5. So the dashed vertical line is kind of going to separate the points that have x-coordinates less than 5 and the points that have x-coordinates bigger than 5. Any point to the left of this line, like if I look at this point right here, here's the point 3, 1. Its x-coordinate is 3. 3 is less than 5. Here's the point... 1, 6. Its x-coordinate is 1. 1 is less than 5, not greater than 5. Point like here, uh, negative 5, negative 4. Its x-coordinate is negative 5, which is less than 5. Every point on the left side of this line, the x-coordinates of every point to the left of that line are less than 5. So they don't need to be included in my answer. Every point on the line, its x-coordinate equals 5. And it shouldn't be included in my answer. Like this point right here, the point 5, negative 2, has an x-coordinate equal to 5. And I'm only trying to identify points that have x-coordinates greater than 5. So that's not going to be part of my answer as well. But any point to the right of this line, for instance, like the point... 6, 1, its x-coordinate is bigger than 5. This point needs to be included in my answer. Uh, the point, how about 5.1 comma 4, its x-coordinate is 5.1, it's greater than 5. Every point to the right of this line, its x-coordinate is bigger than 5. So this line separates the graph into segments. Points that have x-coordinates less than 5, that are to the physically to the left of this line. Points on this line, their x-coordinates physically equal 5. And points to the right of this line, the x-coordinates are strictly greater than 5. I need to identify all the points on a two-dimensional graph whose x-coordinates are greater than 5. I do that by shading every point to the right of this line. So I'm just going to pull out a marker here or a highlighter. And this is drawing a picture, shading every bit of the graph to the right of the dash line where the x-coordinates are 5, will give me a graphical representation of every single point whose x-coordinate is bigger than 5. Of course, my graph could go on forever and the shading could go on forever, um, but I'll stop it there. For your problem one, you're going to do something similar. You're going to try to identify all the points on the graph whose x-coordinates are greater than but not equal to 4. You'll start off by drawing a dashed line through 4 on the x-axis, and then you have to decide on um, which side of the line you're shading on. It'll turn out that the points over here will have x-coordinates less than 4 when you draw your dashed line through 4. The points on that line will have x-coordinates equal to 4, points to the right of that line have x-coordinates greater than 4. And so hopefully, by what I did for number 2, you can figure out number 1. For number 3, you're supposed to identify any point that has an x-coordinate bigger than or equal to 3. For my number 4, I'm supposed to identify all the points that have x-coordinates bigger than or equal to negative 5. Let me do your number 3. 
So I'm going to start number three by identifying all the points who have x coordinates equal to three. I'm going to do it with a solid line because any point that has an x coordinate of equal to 3 satisfies its x coordinate as greater than or equal to negative 3, should I say? So I'm going to start off, I'm going to draw a solid line through x equal negative 3 on the x-axis. And that's going to identify every point whose x-coordinate is specifically equal to negative 3, and those need to be included in my answer. So I'll put a solid line. That means any point on that line is included in my answer. Any point to the left of this line is going to have an x-coordinate less than negative 3 because the x-values of every point get smaller as I move to the left. Every point to the right of this line has an x-coordinate that's bigger than negative 3 because my x's get bigger than negative 3 as I move to the right. So I'm going to shade to the right. And what this is going to do is show both parts of the inequality. I'm showing all the points who have an x-coordinate equal to th negative 3 that need to be included in my answer with a solid line. In the last problem, I did my graph with a dashed line because the points on that line weren't supposed to be included in my answer. A dashed line means the points on the line aren't included in my answer. A solid line means the points on the line are included in my answer. And I'm going to shade to the right because every point to the right of every point to the right of this line has an x coordinate that's three or bigger. And then my shading's going to get really cruddy because it takes so long to shade. I'm just going to do a really kind of cruddy shading for the most of the time. All right, so I probably should come up with some general rules when we're dealing with any graphs that only have x's. So if I have x greater than some number, I'm going to draw a dashed line through that number. and shade right. The dashed line is going to identify all the points that have the x-coordinate equal to that number. They're not included in the answer, so I put a dashed line shading to the right because x, x, x's get bigger as you go to the right, and I want my x to be bigger than the number, so I need to go to the right. If I have x greater than or equal to some number, I'm going to start off drawing a solid line because that solid line, that solid vertical line, that goes through that number on the x-axis will give you all the points that have an x equal to that number. And then I'll shade right because any point to the right will have an x-coordinate bigger than, than that number. And for both of these, I'm doing either a dashed vertical line or a solid vertical line. When equations of lines only have x's, you get vertical lines. Problem 5 and 6 have less than signs, and they don't have or equal to's. To start off problem 6, I want to identify all the points that have x coordinates equal to 6, but I don't want to include those in my answer, so I, I'll start off drawing a dashed vertical line through 6. So I'm going to draw a dashed vertical line. through x equal to 6, and this identifies every point on the graph who has an x-coordinate equal to 6. They're not supposed to be included in my answer, and putting a dashed line makes those points not part of my answer. Now I need to identify all the points who have x-coordinates less than 6, and if I go to the right of this dashed line, the x-coordinates are 7 or 8 or 9 or 10. They're bigger than 6. If I go to the left of that line, I go 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 for the x-coordinates. The x-coordinates are less than 6, so I'm going to shade to the left because every point to that left of the, the left of that line, its x-coordinate is a number, I can't do these so well, anything to the left of that line, 
any point that I'm covering up to the left of that line has an x-coordinate that is less than 6, and that's what I'm trying to identify. So I'm shading in, in the entirety every single bit of the graph to the left of that line. I'm technically shading right up to that line. Any point just a hair to the left of that line, its x-coordinate is going to be less than 6, like maybe 5.999. So that would be a reasonable graph for number six. Your problem five should work similarly. Problem eight has an or equal to. So I'm going to start off and identify all the points that have x coordinates equal to negative one and include those in my answer because I'm supposed to identify any point that has an x coordinate less than negative one or equal to negative one. I'm going to start off by drawing a solid vertical line through negative 1 on the x-axis. And this will show every single point that has an x-coordinate equal to negative 1. Those points need to be included in my answer, so I drew a solid line as opposed to a dashed line. Now I need to identify all the points that satisfy the less the x-coordinates are less than negative 1. If I go to the right of this line, the x-coordinates get bigger, so they're greater than negative 1. If I go to the left of that line, the x-coordinates get smaller, and they're less than negative 1. So I'm going to shade right up to the line and every point to the left of that line. So shading right up to the line and then every point to the left of that line. You can darken this in as much as you care to dark it in. Like the very first graph I drew really dark, but now I'm getting lazy and just emphasizing that I'm shading every point to the left of that line. So maybe another time for a rule. If I have x less than some number, I do a dashed vertical line through that number and shade left. If I have an x less than or equal to some number, I do a solid vertical line and shade left. So for x's, less than's are left, greater than's are right. So for x's, less than which is that or that, you shade left. And for greater thans, any kind of greater thans, greater than, which would be greater than or greater than or equal to, I'm going to shade right. And then the um, less than compared to the less than or equal to just changes whether you get a dashed or a solid line. You get solid lines when you have or equal to's, so you get dashed lines when you don't have or equal to's. The next few problems um, want me to identify points and worry about their y-coordinates. For problem 10, I want to identify every point whose y-coordinate is greater than 3. And to do this, I'm going to draw a horizontal line a dashed horizontal line through 3 on the y-axis. And what this is going to identify, it's going to identify every point who has a y-coordinate equal to 3. I don't want to include those points on my line because I don't want to include the y's equal to 3. The dashed lines discounts or excludes those points. And now I want to identify every point that has a y-coordinate bigger than 3. If I go below, I see here like y is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 3. All these y's are less than 3. So these don't need to be included. 
all the y's up here, like y equal to 4, y equal to 5, y equal to 6, y equal to 7, are bigger than 3, so I should shade up. The reason I'm shading up is because every point above this line has a y coordinate that's bigger than 3. Every point beneath the line has a y coordinate less than 3, and I'm trying to identify the points that have y coordinates physically bigger than 3. So I'm going to shade every single bit above my graph the best I can. You can shade just like this if you want to. If that isn't pretty enough for you, you can go in and take some sort of marker and you can shade completely. When I'm shading, I technically mean I am shading every single bit of open space above the line that I'm drawing to the edge of the graph signifying that if the graph went further, the shading would go further. So I don't necessarily care if you want to darken in your shading to look something like that. That's probably, you know, looks better by glancing. But if you want to just do like dash lines for shadings or scribbles for shadings, you don't have to do a, a block out shading. So the next few problems are only going to have Y's. And in general, when we have a Y greater than some number, we'll draw a dashed line and we'll shade up because Y's greater than means bigger. Y's get bigger as you go up, so I'm going to shade up. In the next group of next problem, we're going to have a Y greater than or equal to. We'll use a solid line when we have an or equal to. We're still going to shade up because greater than for the y's, y's get greater as you go higher. And a few problems from this, we're going to do y's less thans. And for y's less thans, you'll start off with a dashed horizontal line. And for less thans, y's get smaller as you go down. To identify the y's that are less than some number, I'm going to shade down. And for y's less than or equal to, I'm going to do a solid line. All of these are horizontal lines. And I'm going to shade down. So for y's, greater than is up, less than is down. Whereas for x's, less than is left greater than is right. So x's are left and right, y's are up and down. So y's up, greater than's up, less than's down, x's greater than's right, less than's left. So when I go to do problem 12, I see y greater than or equal to negative 6. I know I need a solid line because of the or equal to. It's a really unfortunate one to have to shade. So I'm going to draw a solid line through y equal to negative 6. It's a greater than, so I'm trying to find points in this y coordinates that are bigger than negative 6. Y's get bigger as we go up. So I'm going to shade every single point right up to this line that's above this line. And then again, you can shade as solid as you want or as loose as you want, but I'm shading every single point that's above the line that I've drawn, and I'm getting tired of my, actually my hand's even getting tired doing the shading. Ugh, this is not fun. That's got to be decent enough shading. Ugh. For problem 14, it's a y with a less than. I'm going to start off by drawing a horizontal line through negative 1 on the y-axis. It's dashed because I don't have the or equal to. It doesn't matter how big or small you make your dashes. And I'm going to identify the points that have y coordinates less than negative 1. Less than means smaller, and y's get smaller as we go down. So as I go to shade this, I'm going to shade every single point under that line. 
uh, the best I can anyways, or, well, it's not the best I can, but the best I can without taking a ridiculous amount of time. So that should motivate you for 13. 14, uh, 15 and 16 are good. 16 is better. I'm going to draw a horizontal line through 0 on the y-axis, and it has to be solid. 0 on the y-axis is right at the origin. That's actually the point zero, 0. So for my line, y is less than or equal to 0. I find 0 on the y-axis, draw a horizontal line through it, solid, and that actually turns out to be the x-axis. I think we learned a little bit ago that the x-axis has an equation y equal to 0. Because it's less than, I'm going to mark the points underneath the, that point because above that point, the y's get bigger than 0. Beneath that point, beneath that line, the y's get less than 0. So I'm going to shade down. So in this section, when we're graphing inequalities that only have one letter, it's not so bad. In a second here, we're going to have inequalities that have two letters, and it's a little bit trickier. So real quickly, again, so if I have x greater than or x greater than or equal to, I get a dashed or a solid vertical line. and I'm going to shade right. If I have x is less than, or x is less than or equal to, you either get a dashed, if it's a less than, a solid, if it's a greater than, x only is our vertical lines, and you shade left. So x is our vertical lines, greater than you shade right, less than you shade left, Y's are horizontal lines, and greater than you shade up, less than you shade down. So that's kind of everything we need up through problem 16 for all the problems that only have one letter. Once we get beyond problem 16, the problems are going to start to have two letters, and we're going to have to attack them a little bit differently. So 17 and 18 have multiple letters, and once we have multiple letters, uh, it gets a little bit harder. But the part of the rule that's going to be the same for certain is if I have a greater than, or I mean if I have a less than or a greater than, I'm going to get a dashed line. If I have a less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, I'll get a solid line. That part's going to be consistently the same. The shading part's going to be uh, iffy. Um, it's hard to generalize, but usually, but not always, but I guess if I w was completely baffled and I wanted to make a guess, a less than or less than or equal to, I'll say you shade towards the origin and a greater than or greater than or equal to, you shade away from the origin. Um, as we go through these problems, I'll try to help you make sense of that. So if I wanted to graph all the points that have an x-coordinate plus the y-coordinate of that point less than 6, I need to do some work. The work to do number 18 is first find the x and y-intercepts. I'm doing 18. Find the x and y-intercept. of the line x plus y equals 6 and connect them with a dashed line. 
because it's a less than and not a less than or equal to, I get a dashed line and not a solid line. So easy enough to find these x and y intercepts. So if I looked at the line x plus y equal to 6, and I made a quick table, I'll put a 0 in for an x, and when I put 0 in for x, I can go 0 plus y equal to 6. That will give me y equal to 6. That's going to be the y-intercept. If in that same table I put 0 in the y column and went to this line and plugged 0 in for y and did x plus 0 equal to 6, this would give me x equal to 6, and that's going to be the x-intercept. So plugging 0 in for x gives the y-intercept. Plugging 0 in for y gives the x-intercept. Let me plot these two points. I'm going to plot the point 0, 6. I'll just make a dot there instead of writing the point. And the point 6, 0, which are the y-intercept and the x-intercept. I'm going to connect them with a dashed line. Just like when I'm dealing with only x's and only y's, I need to shade all the points that satisfy the, the problem and that's going to be a bit tricky at first but then eventually get easy. Every point on the line, like the point right here, the point 0, 6, if you add its x plus y, 0 plus 6 equal to 6. This point right here is the point 4, 2. If you add the x, 4, plus the y2, you get 6. Every point on this line, if you add up the x and the y coordinate, they equal to 6. That's why you get a dashed line there, because I don't want any points whose x and y coordinates add up to get 6. I need to figure out which points, which side of the line, if I pick a point, its x and its y coordinate add up to a number less than 6. And the way I do this, to figure out the side of the line, the shade, so I've did my step first. I found the x, x and y intercept, connected them with a dashed line. Next, plug the points on either side of the x intercept. into the x plus y is less than 6 to determine the side of the line that needs to be shaded. My guess was if it's a less than or less than or equal to, I'd shade towards the origin. The origin is here. My guess is I'd probably shade this side of the line. But let me do this. The point to the left of the um, x-intercept is the point 5, 0. The point to the right of the x-intercept is the point 7, 0. So 5, 0 is to the left of 6, 0. 7, 0 is to the right of 6, 6 0. Let me plug in 5 for x and 0 for y and go 5 plus 0 is less than 6. That's 5 is less than 6. When I plugged a number in that 5, 0 in, I got a true statement. Let me do the same thing. Take a 7, plug it in for x, and 0, plug it in for y, and get 7 plus 0 is less than 6. That gives me 7 is smaller than 6. That's a false statement. It will turn out that every point on th the, this side of the line is going to give a true statement, and every, sign, every point on the opposite side of the line gives a false statement. So I'm going to shade where the true point was, and it means I'm going to shade everything on the kind of bottom half of this line. So to finish this problem up, I need to shade, and I'm going to shade every point on the bottom of the line, which means every single point that I'm covering up if you take that point and add its x coordinate and add its y coordinate together, you're going to get a number bigger, less than 6. Every point on the opposite side of the line, if you add its x and its y coordinate up, you're going to get a number bigger than 6. Because every point on this side of the line 
its x plus y coordinate satisfies that x plus y is less than 6. Every point on the line satisfies x plus y equal to 6. And every point on the opposite side of the line satisfies x plus y is greater than 6. So this separates the graph into three segments. This left, anything that's shaded, if you take a point, its x coordinate plus its y coordinate is less than 6. Any point on the line, its x coordinate plus its y coordinate equals 6, like 0 plus 6 is 6, 4 plus 2 is 6. And any point on the opposite side of the line where I didn't shade, if you add its x plus y coordinate, you'll get a number bigger than 6. For instance, if I take this point like 6, 5 right here, if I add the x and the y coordinate, x is 6, y is 5, 6 plus 5 is 11. If I took a point like this, the point 1, 2, if I added its x coordinate 1 plus its y coordinate 2, I get 3, which is less than 6. So what I've done is I've identified every single point that has that satisfies x plus y is less than 6, but not equal to 6. If this, ha this had an or equal to, the line would be solid as opposed to dashed. All right, I don't know if that's enough for you to do 17, but give it a go, and we'll see um, if you can do it. If you can't, uh, let, me, let me do 19 for you. That way you can pause the video, you can try 19. Uh, if you can't do it, you can't. If you can, then you're doing great, and you can now watch me do it. So to start off 19, I'm going to find, so for first part of 19, I'm going to find the x and y intercept of 3x, so I'm going to do 19, plus 4y equals to 12, and connect with a dashed line. So I'm going to plug 0 in for x and solve for y first. So I'm going to get 3 times 0 plus 4y equals to 12. That gives me 4y equals to 12. And when I divide by 3, I get y, divide by 4, I get y equal to 3. So the x, the y-intercept is going to be 0, 3. Next, I'm going to plug 0 in for y. Plugging in 0 for y, I go 3x plus 4 times 0 equals to 12. The 0 piece goes away. This gives me 3x equal to 12. Divide by 3 and get x equal to 4. So the x-intercept's going to be 4. The y-intercept's going to be 3. I kind of write them without the points. And I get a dashed line here because I don't have the r equal to. Every point on this dashed line, if you take 3 times its x-coordinate and 4 times its y-coordinate and add them together, you'll get 12. So every point on this line, if you take 3 times the x-coordinate plus 4 times the y-coordinate, it'll physically equal to 12. I need to find the points that have 3 times the x-coordinate plus 4 times the y-coordinate that are bigger than 12. To do that, I'm going to take a point on either side of the x-intercept. So I'm going to take the point 3, 0 and the point 5, 0. So second, try points on either side of the x-intercept. That point that I marked out there is the point 3, 0. This point right here is the point 5, 0. And I'm going to try them into 3x plus 4y is greater than 12. And see if I get a true or a false statement. So for this one, I'll go 3 times 3 plus 4 times 0 is bigger than 12. This is going to simplify to 9 is bigger than 12. And 9 isn't bigger than 12, so that's false. And for the other one, if I go 3 times 5 plus 4 times 0 is bigger than 12, this will give me 15 is bigger than 12, which is true. I just need to shade the true side of the line. What this work tells me is that every point on this side of the line, if you take 3 times the x-coordinate plus 4 times the y-coordinate, you'll get a number smaller than 12. 
every point on the line, if you take 3 times the x coordinate of that point plus 4 times the y coordinate, you'll get a number equal to 12. And every point to the right or above that line, if you take 3 times the x coordinate plus 4 times the y coordinate, you'll get a number bigger than 12. And I need to shade the part with the biggers, so I'm going to shade everything above that line. And this fits my little general um, rule here. If I see a greater than or greater than or equal to, I usually shade away from the origin. If I see a less than or less than or equal to, I usually shade towards the origin. In problem 18, when you have both an x and a y, I had a less than. My shading went towards the origin. It actually covered up the origin, which was a point zero zero. And in this problem, it was a greater than, and my shading went away from the origin. The origin is here. My shading went away from the origin, usually kind of up, but not always. So I said, usually, but not always, less than shade towards the origin, you cover the origin up. Greater than shade away from the origin, and you don't cover the origin up. That's not a constant guarantee, and the next problem might actually mess that little rule up. And... Um, in so when I did problem 21, I made a mistake. I don't remember what the mistake was, but I had a little note to myself to refilm this. So this is going to be another one of the hundred cut and paste that I did to fix the videos up. So if I want to graph this inequality, I should find the x and the y intercepts of x minus 3y equals to negative 6 and graph those with a solid line to get started. So I'm going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the x minus 3y equals to negative 6. And this is pretty easy to do. To find the x-intercept, I'm going to plug 0 in for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the x-intercept. And I'm going to go x minus 3 times 0 equals negative 6. That will give me x minus 0 equals negative 6. That will give me x equal to negative 6. So the x-intercept is going to be the point x equal to negative 6. And I plugged in 0 for y, so y equal to 0. I'm going to plot that on the x-axis. Maybe I'll just make a dot and not actually write what the point is, because sometimes it gets a little bit ugly um, in terms of figuring out what the shading points are if my graph gets too cluttered. I'm going to move over and find the y-intercept. I find the y-intercept by plugging in 0 for x. So I'm going to go 0 minus 3y equals to negative 6. That simplifies to minus 3y equals to negative 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And that's going to give me y equal to positive 2. So that's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. And the x-coordinate is 0 because I plugged in 0 for x. So the y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 2. And I'm going to write that on my y-axis. And now I'm going to graph this by connecting the points with a solid line. Kind of the best I can anyways. This is definitely going to be good enough. If you want to, you can put arrows at the end of the line to signify that it keeps going. And now I have to figure out how to shade. I mentioned, I think, that um, less than's usually shade towards the origin, greater than's usually shade away from the origin. That's That generalization kind of blows up when there's a minus in front of one of the, of the letters. In this case, the minus in front of the 3y probably will make it so that less than doesn't shade towards the origin. It probably shades away from the origin. But always it's real easy to be figure out where you need to shade. I'm going to check two points. I'm going to check the point negative 7, 0. And I'm going to change check the point negative 5, 0. I always, to figure out which side of the line I'm going to shade on, pick one point on either side of the x-intercept and plug that into the original inequality and see which one gives me a true statement. It's a little bit tricky when you're dealing with negatives to figure out which is bigger or which is smaller, but we'll deal with it. So first check, 
I'm going to check the point negative 7 comma 0 by plugging negative 7 in for the x, 0 in for the y, and this whole thing is going to simplify. The left side is going to be negative 7 minus 0, which is just negative 7. The right side is negative 6. I have to know if that's a true or a false statement. For a number to be less than another number, it has to be further left on the number line. And if I think of the x-axis as a number line, negative 7 is to the left of negative 6. So this is a true statement right here. The other checking I'm going to do is checking negative 5, 0. I'm going to plug in negative 5 for that x. I'm going to plug in 0 for that y. And that has to be less than or equal to negative 6. The left side is going to be negative 5 minus 0, because the negative 3 times 0 is 0, which is going to just give me negative 5. The right side is still negative 6. Negative to see if negative 5 is less than negative 6, or less than or equal to negative 6, it would have to be to the left of negative 6. Negative 5 is to the right of negative 6 on the number line, so negative 5 is greater than negative 6, and this is a false statement. So I know which side of the line to shade on. I need to shade the side of the line that has the point negative 7, 0, which is of this side of the line here. So I'm going to shade all this kind of the best I can. Uh, so as I go to shade, I know because the side of the line that had negative 7, 0 gave me a true statement that I was going to shade that side of the line. And you don't have to get that precise with your shading, just as long as I can tell you're shading the top side of the line as opposed to the bottom side of the line. We're perfectly fine. I'm not shading the side of the line that had the point negative 5, 0, which is beneath the line because that was a false statement. All right, so I'm going to cut and paste this in. Um, I don't know why I decided to do 21 as opposed to 20 or 22, but I did one of your homework problems, so I will just cut this in. I'll do two more problems and then we'll make a part two. So um, for problem 22, I'm going to start off and I'm going to find the x and the y intercept of 3x minus 2y equals negative 6 and connect with a solid line. So I'm going to make my table. I'm going to plug 0 in for x and get 3 times 0 minus 2y equals to negative 6. This will give me minus 2y equal to negative 6. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and you get positive 3. The first point I'm going to plot is 3 on the y-axis. That's the point 0, 3. Next, I'm going to plug 0 in for y and get 3x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 6. That gives me 3x equals negative 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and get x equal negative 2. Connect those now with a solid line because of the or equal to part. Every point on that line, if you take 3x minus 2y, it will equal 6. Now I'm going to go for my shading. For shading, I'm going to pick two points, point to the left and to the right of that. So I'm going to try negative 3, 0 and negative 1, 0 because they're the points on either side of the x-intercepts, plugging them into the original problem. So I'm going to go 3 times negative 3 minus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to negative 6. This gives me negative 9 is less than or equal to negative 6. Negative 6 is here. Negative 9 is there. Negative 9 is to the left, so it's less than. So this is true. For the other one, when I plug negative 1 in, I get 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to negative 6. This gives me negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 6. Negative 3 is here. Negative 6 is there. Negative 3 is to the right of negative 6, so it's not less than, it's greater than. So this is false. When I go to do my shading, I'm going to shade everything on the, I don't know if it's called the north side of the line, above the line. 
Let me flash 23 up here. It was another one that I had a mistake on the key. I must, whenever I did this key, I must have been very tired. I fixed that key now so I don't have to worry about it. And let, why don't you pause the video and try it and I'll do it real quickly. If you can pause the video, try it, and then watch me do it, and it will be good. So for 23, I'm going to start, and I'm going to draw, I'm going to find, find the x and the y intercept of 3x minus 4y equals to negative 24. I'm going to plug 0 in for x and get 3 times 0 minus 4y equals to minus 24. This simplifies to minus 4y equal to minus 24. Divide by minus 4, divide by minus 4, get y equal to 6. Next, plug 0 in for y, get 3x minus 4 times 0 equal minus 24. This gives me 3x equals minus 24. Divide by 3, divide by 3, you get x equal to negative 8. I'm going to mark a negative 8 on the x-axis and a positive 6 on the y-axis. And I'm going to connect those with a solid line because of the or equal to. And then I'm going to figure out where to shade. I'm going to plug in negative 9 and negative 7. So I'm going to try negative 9, 0 and negative 7, 0, which are on opposite sides of the intercept. For negative 9, 0, I go 3 times negative 9 minus 4. 4 times 0 is bigger than or equal to negative 24. That gives me negative 27 is bigger than negative 24. Negative 27 is further left. That's going to be false. For this one, when I plug in 3 times negative 7 minus 4 times 0 is greater than or equal to negative 24, I get negative 21 is bigger than or equal to negative 24. And that's true. I need to shade towards the true side of the line. So I'm going to shade everything underneath this line. I need to shade towards the origin. And that's what I'm doing here. My shading is going towards the origin, depending on how solid I want to make my shading. My video is getting ready to break. So I'm going to stop here. and We're going to move into a part two.